I would like to welcome back Jackie Vinson, um, Austin uh, singer songwriter and awesome guitarist. Back to the show. Hi, Jackie. Hi, it's so good to be back. You have a new EP out called Transcends. Um, we're going to yeah. talk about that here in a minute. You know, the last time we spoke, um, it was uh, three years ago, I do believe. You just uh, released your album, The Light in Me. Yep. And uh, how is how did you approach this album different? Cause I, I believe The Light in Me was your was the last studio album you did before this one, correct? Yes, it was. It was the because the one after that was a live album. Right. How did you approach this one differently than you did the previous one? I really wanted to focus more on the songwriting. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to to like not have it be so guitar-y and like focused on the fact that I am a girl who can play the guitar. <laughs> mm-hmm. I really wanted to go a little bit deeper than that. Um, so I, I I started looking at things that other people had done for legendary studio albums and you know time constraints and arrange i focus more on the arranging of each song the arrangements of each song maybe maybe that chorus doesn't need to be so long you know like that kind of stuff i was just mainly focusing on um the songwriting and the studio aspect of it you know i want to go back a little bit here because uh you know we we talked previously about your your family being you know musical and uh, yeah. your brother, uh, who was a gospel singer, your dad uh, played bass uh, um, in R and B and blues. And uh, you doing your thing. I'm kind of curious. What was the kitchen table talk like? I mean, how many times did you guys get into arguments about what was the best music? <laughs> I, <laughs> my brother, my brother Andre, who does the gospel, he's so much older than me. But by the time I was able to even formulate conversations about that, he was already out and working. And and my dad's really laid back about just everything. Really, the only the only stuff he really doesn't like is is just stuff that doesn't that doesn't like uh, require a lot of skill. So like if he hears somebody playing. Like if he hears a recording or something, and they're not very skilled or very good or very talented or whatever, that's the only stuff that drives him nuts. He doesn't really care about genres or any of that stuff. He knows that every genre has its only its own special thing to offer. And I actually am really grateful to both of them for not telling me, "Oh, don't don't do that rap don't crap do or that, don't yeah. do that rock stuff." Or they they never ever told me one genre was bad or one genre was great. They they definitely have their favorite genres, but they never just like crapped all over another one. You know what I mean? And did, so did honestly, they, did they ever tell you not to get into the music in the music business? No, actually, no. <laughs> they always encouraged me because they're both in the music business. <laughs> I mean, it's such it's 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 a, it's a tough gig to do. I'm just curious about that because I've well, they told me it was hard, but yeah, they never I, told me not to do it. <laughs> I've interviewed cats before that uh, um, I ask him, I, you know, I, I like to ask a question if you have uh, um, any advice to give any up and coming artists, what would you give them? And I've had cats tell me, don't do it. <laughs> that's crazy. I, I would never say that. that. That's not good. You don't want to tell people that because everybody's going to have a different experience. I, for, for example, I find it extremely difficult, but I enjoy the challenge. And, and that's why I would never tell anybody to not do it, they need to find out on their own whether or not they want to accept the challenge or not. You know what I mean? They, they can't, you can't decide that for them. But it is challenging, no matter what. It, it's a category F business, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, I know. You were, you were influenced by Buddy Guy. Um, yeah. What does, what, what, what kind of, I guess, what kind of influences does he have in what you do? I really love his stage performance and his stage presence. I, I love how he's just this wild, like, ball of lightning. Even even, even in his 80s, he's still the same kind he's of amazing, energy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, yeah, there's a lot of things that he used to do that he doesn't do anymore, but it doesn't change the energy. The energy's the exact same. He's just this ball of lightning. He zips around the stage and messes with people and says funny things and plays a mean guitar. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, lately, actually, he's gotten really, um, I don't know if he always did monologues, but lately he's been doing monologues about how we all need to love each other, which is actually really cool. I've never seen that side of him, you know? 
never seen that side of him. I, I always thought he was just kind of like this, not ornery, but like maybe like a, not like so so much mean, but definitely you don't want to mess with him. You right. know what I mean? Like don't mess with him. But he's not going to be mean. And he's buddy he's just guy. Powerful, yeah, he's just powerful, just like force. And he doesn't care what anybody thinks. And he doesn't care that he just missed that string or that he just missed that note. He doesn't care. It doesn't matter because all that matters is that he's providing an experience for people and everybody's having a good time. And that very thing is exactly what I got from him. You went to Berkeley like school. It doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> you went to Berkeley School of Music. We talked about this before as well, and you were talking about how how cutthroat it was and how competitive it is. Yeah. And uh, um, you graduated early because you wanted to get the. Uh, I'm going to quote you here. You wanted to get the <laughs> hell out of there. And, yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. And so, I, I, a question I have for you is that uh, um, first thing is is did you Learn anything from that that helped you in your career, and if so, uh, I mean, how? Uh, well, I guess the question is, is that because there are young artists that do this in the show, and they haven't gone to uh, uh, Berkeley or ha they haven't gone to Juilliard, and they're and and some of these cats are really doing well uh, as far as independent artists goes. Uh, did Berkeley teach you anything that? helped you as far as um, being an independent artist? Yes, absolutely. And and it's kind of like cliche and trite what it taught me. I, it taught me that the only thing that matters for succeeding in this business is, A, you need to believe in yourself, mm -hmm. and B, you need to work really, really, really hard and never give up. That's it. And it doesn't matter what you do or how good you think you are or how good other people think you are. You just have to believe in yourself and you have to find opportunities that match you and the things that you want to do, not, not what you think you should be doing. And the reason why there is no should, it's like free yourself from the word should in this business. Because the reason why Berkeley taught me that is because I went to Berkeley thinking that I'm going to go to this school because I should go to this school. This is what I need to do to add to my success, which is not true at all. The things I learned at that school, there's various other ways I could have learned all of those same things. I could have interned with a studio. I could have gone out and started gigging just on my own. I could have befriended somebody who arranges for strings. And, you know, there's so many ways to get an education. You don't need to go to a school. A school's just convenient. It's just all conveniently located in one building. That's the only difference, you know, and, and I thought I needed to go there because it had this reputation and it had this, this stuff and it would make my name and my, I don't know, resume look good. Mm -hmm. And um, so far it hasn't abs it actually hasn't really done anything for me in that regard. And well, you went there to, uh, you were originally, you originally played piano and you didn't yeah, start playing there. guitar until you, like your, seat, your last year there. Why this? Yeah. Why the switch? I, I just, mean, just because you couldn't carry a piano around with you and it was easier a guitar mm -hmm. or what? No, I just didn't like playing the piano anymore. I didn't want to play it anymore. I'm serious. I was bored of it. I'm still bored of it. I well, still you, don't like playing you it. You started at eight. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just got tired of it. It's a series of events that led to my falling out of love with the piano. But anyways, what I was saying is the number one thing I learned from Berkeley is that there is no should, there is no rules. And the only two things you really need to do is believe in yourself and work hard. And that is the absolute truth yeah the new it's out just the new, true across the, the new ep uh we're gonna get into the new ep here uh um it's called transcends and it does transcend uh um because i just uh aired uh a previous interview that we did you know i aired your songs uh from the light in me and this one is a little bit different isn't it definitely way different <laughs> Talk about it's, how you uh, got the concept for this. It's it's different sonically because it was produced and mixed by 
uh, two different people, whereas the other projects were produced and mixed and mastered by the same person. Mm -hmm. Really wanted to. I really wanted to. I was going to ask you if, if Eddie was involved in this at all. No, he was not. This is the first recording I've done that Eddie was not involved in, and and I really just wanted to. That was that was also part of the experiment. What what's it like to work with somebody else? What's it like to get two or three people to to work on the same project instead of just one guy who does it all? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's interesting getting the different ears and the different perspectives when it when it comes to the mixing and the recording process. So that was part that was part of the new experiment. Also, as I said earlier, I wanted to focus on the songwriting and and keep it kind of like studio, um, like radio cut friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, I really wanted to work on that. But at the same time, the challenge is that you got to keep it short, but you still got to pu punch. You still got to pack a punch and. A lot of musicians rebel against that. They're like, oh, well, you shouldn't tell me that I have to have a three and a half minute song. I'm like, or maybe it's just a challenge for you as a songwriter to try and get everything you need to say and everything you need to do condensed into three minutes. Don't look mm -hmm. at it as a someone trying to, you know, stifle you. Look at well, it look, as look, look at the Beatles, your opportunity lot, to grow. A lot of early Beatles songs, man. They were like, like two, two, and and a half, half two and a half minutes long. Minutes, right? And those songs changed the world, right. man. So it's right. like just because it's a short song doesn't mean it's an inferior song. So I wanted to accept that challenge. I'm like, okay, radio cut, three, three and a half minutes, four minutes maximum. Let's try it. And so that's that's another part of the experience for this project. And then I also really wanted to write about like love in the universal form. I didn't want to write. I didn't want to do like a love album. You know, my next album will be a love album. I, I wanted know to do it like is a, a love album, is it? It isn't. It isn't a love album. Right. It's a universe album. Right. It's like a spiritual album. So I wanted to do that too, or it's an EP, I guess technically, but it's a spiritual yeah. EP. It's not anything about what goes on on Earth. It's about what goes on around Earth <laughs> and well, in the let's, atmosphere. Let's talk about some of these individual tracks because uh, uh, I want to start with the first one with uh, flying. It's uh, more of an R and B based track i mean this is this is this is this i i can see your dad digging this one yeah he loves that song yeah yes talk about the story behind it it is kind of like the you know the string theory mm -hmm. you know like people think that the atmosphere is made up of all of these little things holding it together that we can't see with our eyes. I love it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> metaphysical, yes. That's exactly what that song's about. It's like, you got, we. there aren't any rules, but there are rules at the same time. It's like, if you want this thing to unfold this way, you have to put this type of energy into it. So, it, it, and, and you don't have to do that in order to exist, you can put a different type of energy into it, but if you put a different type of energy in it, it's not going to end up this way. If you want it to end up this way, you have to put this type of energy in it. And it's basically like a whole EP about all of the possibilities of, of life if you just focus on the type of things you want and the type of energy you need to put in to those things. Well, and once again, the, the album na is, is named, the uh, uh, EP is uh, Transcends. Uh, the second song is called Fast. Uh, mm. It's the second track on the EP. Uh, that's just pure rock and roll, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like punk rock. Yeah. Right? You know? <laughs> that song that song's about, about the consequences of putting a certain type of energy into a certain thing. So it's like, yeah, you can go out and party hard and, and you know, live fast and everything, but... Uh, you should go look at all of the other people who did the same thing. Are you sure you want that? You want? Do you want to die at 27? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, just go look at all the other people who who made the same choices that you're making, and ask yourself if you want to end up where they did. Well, this, you know, I want to point out that the, the album is not preachy in no. any way, you know. But you still have you have these. Um, this, uh, uh, you know, the, I guess the, uh, the motif of it that, that is, is, is telling, is letting f folks know that there is, uh, uh, a transition, a transition, is that right? Tra transcendence, transcendence. Transcendence. Uh, 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 formula to the whole thing and that we all, and that we all change, don't we? 
Yeah, we all change and we all grow and, and that's okay. And and every as a matter of fact, not only is that okay, everything's okay. Right. Whatever you decide to do, it, it's okay. Like it's not good or bad or 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 evil or whatever. I mean, you can call it that if you if we're talking about the actual reality that we are sharing as human beings, but just overall in the overall universe, everything's okay. Like <laughs> it's going to end up how it's going to end up. Yeah. And we have very little control over it. We only have control over the energy we put in. Especially, and usually the energy you put in is the energy you get back. Especially and, in today's day and age, right? Yeah. It's just yeah. like whatever yeah. you want to do, whatever you want, just decide that and figure out what you need to do to achieve it. And, and everything's okay. And if you don't achieve it, that's okay too. At least you tried. Like. The that's why it's not. That's not. That's why it's not preachy. It's like I'm just it telling is, you yeah. the things I've observed and the things that I've learned from experience. And you can take this information and you can do with it whatever you want. I'm just saying here's the information. So yeah, that I definitely. I'm glad that you said it's not preachy because I don't mean to be preachy. I just well, mean to tell people what I've been learning in my short life. Maybe they can use it's, it. It's the transition of of what you do, and it's also the transition of how things are. I think, you know, yeah, um, just how things are exactly right. Yeah. Uh, the, the third track, um, uh, mysterious, uh, that's yeah. a bit different. That has this kind of Caribbean pop sound to it. Hell yeah, man. It's the drum. Right? Beat. <laughs> I told, I told Ronnie to come up with some kind of wacky drum beat. I was like, come up with a crazy drum beat. That's groovy, but not like been done before. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and he nailed it. I love his drum beat on that. We were actually going to originally not have a drum kit, and we got about 80% through the recording, and we were like, ah, crap, we need a drum kit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that was the other thing about that record. Um, there was a lot of discovering. We thought, we went in thinking the arrangement was going to be this, and then we get halfway through the song, and we're like, oh, crap. Oh, so we really yeah. need some pizzicato strings. <laughs> Don't you just hate when that happens? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just bound to happen in the studio. And, and that was the other thing about the challenge of the studio versus any other type of recording, like maybe live or whatever. The challenge of the studio is that you think you know everything going in, and then you start doing it and everything changes. All of a sudden, you thought it was going to be 80 BPM. All of a sudden, it's 120 uh -huh. BPM, and now it's, you know, halftime or whatever, <laughs> double time. Like, And you didn't think that was going to be necessary but until you laid it down on record. And... uh it's a challenge. Studio recording is probably one of the most challenging things that I consistently face. The the fourth track, I really dig. Um, it's, fight. Uh, fight. Yeah. That's that has this. I don't know. It's like a, a funky urban beat to it. I mean, this is totally different from anything else that you've ever done. I think. Yeah, it's kind of people kind of tell me the beat. Just the beat reminds them of uh, Michael Jackson, some kind yeah. of Michael Jackson. Yeah, song. and I, that, I can't pin down which song it. it is. Yeah, I can't pin, yeah. pin down which song they mean. Maybe they don't mean a specific song. Maybe they just mean the feel. But mm -hmm. or maybe maybe it reminds them kind of of Billy Jean. Maybe I think Billy Jean is what somebody told me that it the beat itself reminded them of. But obviously none of the rest of the song sounds anything like that. But yeah, I, I, I'm like, okay, I'll take that. I love Michael Jackson. <laughs> what was, what's the story behind that, that one? Fight. Fight yeah. is probably, if, if any of the songs on the on the um, album is going to be preachy, I bet you Fight would probably be the, <laughs> the closest to that. But it's not really because it's uh, in the first person. I'm talking about wanting to make myself better. I'm not like telling people what they need to do. I'm like, hey, look, I'm realizing that I need to improve myself. You know, I, I ain't perfect either. That's kind of what the – but then but then it goes on to be like, okay, I'm improving myself. Maybe we can all improve ourselves, you know. It's kind of like a lead-by-example kind of song. You know, every song on the EP is very good. And uh, I really also like, the, you know, the, the, the final track, which is the, uh, the title song. Bad left in me. That is, yeah, yeah. That is really kind of, and I re, it's kind of, it's, oh, what's the words I want to think of? Uh, uh, edgy, uh, mm -hmm. kind of R and B and rock to that. You know, it has that kind of, it's 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 rock and roll and it's kind of R and B, but it has a little bit of edge to it. 
Oh, yeah, the, the last one, Transcends. Mm -hmm. Transcends, yes. It kind of has a little bit of reggae in it, too. Yes, you know? it does, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I, uh, I definitely love mixing rock and reggae. I've, I've done that before with a song called What I Need. Mm -hmm. uh, I love Which mixing rock and reggae. Which is one of my favorite what, songs, by the way. Yeah, what I, what I Need is a little more obvious about the reggae. Yeah. But... Um, Transcends only has like little tinges, like reggae tinged, you know. Little but hint. I, I love that song. Yeah, a little hint, yes. I love that song. That's probably my favorite track off the EP. I did an acoustic version of it last night, and it translates really well to acoustic. I was pretty excited to, to find that out. <laughs> Are you still doing uh, Truth and Music on YouTube? No, not yet. I, not anymore. I started touring, and I lost the consistency of my schedule to be able to handle a YouTube series like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's okay. The videos, a lot of the videos are still up. Some of them aren't. Some of them are a little too rough for me to let them get through the, the, uh, the filter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have one more question for you. This is very important now. Okay. All right. Are you still sitting on your musical? I mean, you wrote this when you were 17, oh, the first the act. Anthem. Are you still, I mean, is, is when is this going to be released? When are we going to see it? <laughs> when are we going to see this yeah. musical? Yeah. Well, first of all, I have to finish it. I still have to do the second act. <laughs> I have the story finished. You've I don't have the music You've been working on it since you were 17. How long well, is it going to take? I've been taking a hiatus. I haven't been working on it at all for like the last four or five years. I did go and revisit some of the old recordings and, and fortunately it still sounds good. So I would be sometimes I write stuff when I'm like when I listen to stuff I wrote from years ago, I'm like, ooh, but it's okay. This this time it did not happen. This, the music is still good. And uh, I could finish it at some point, but I just got so many irons in the fire right now, man. I'm waiting for some of them to to light. You know? I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, man. I'm I, honestly, I'm waiting for a bigger audience. You know <laughs> what I mean? Because musicals are really expensive to put on and to complete, and just everything. And I'm gonna need a lot more resources to be able to to do that. So I'm uh, just kind of chilling on it. I'm sitting on it, like you said. <laughs> sitting on it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once again, I've been speaking with uh, Austin. Texas uh, singer-songwriter and awesome guitarist, Jackie Benson. Uh, her latest out EP is called Transcends. It's out now. Um, for my listeners, where they can find out more about you and, uh, and buy your music. Check me out at my website, Jackie Benson. That's V as in Victor, E-N-S-O-N, JackieVenson.com. And also, if you type my name into pretty much any digital musical platform that you use, it could be RDO to Amazon to Spotify, it doesn't even matter, you'll, you'll be able to find the new Transcends EP on there. You are everywhere. Yeah, I make myself very easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> as easy uh, by the as way, I can. Uh, Guitar Player Magazine said that uh, she fearlessly presents a number of styles, feels, and moods, all anchored by a a rainbow of Stratocaster sounds. I dig that. I dig that too. I I, I like any chance to use the word rainbow. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I dig that a lot. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you, Jackie. All right. Thank you so much.